So when we turn on that primitive nervous system called the fight or flight nervous system, we're mobilizing enormous amounts of energy in our body's resources that we would typically use for healing, digestion, reproduction, whatever, assimilation. We're, ta we're robbing those systems and we're saying, there's a threat, there's a danger. There's something really, really that needs all of your attention in your outer environment, and that, that arousal causes us to feel fear or any deriv derivative of it, aggression or anger or pain. So when we respond to the environment like that, our body's knocked out of balance because we're mobilizing all that energy. Pupils dilate, respiratory rate goes up, heart rate goes up, up digestive juices shut down, blood is sent to the extremities, the body's ready to run, fight, or hide. All organisms in nature can tolerate that short term. If you turn on that stress response and you can't turn it off, now you're headed for a disease because no organism can live in emergency mo mode without a moment for, for regeneration or growth and repair. All right, so the arousal for some reason feels good to human beings and that arousal gives us a rush of energy and then we need the bad news, we need the problems in our life, we need the poor relationship, we need whatever it is to cause us to feel this kind of arousal. So then when the body knows how to do it better than the conscious mind, then for the most part the greatest habit we have to break is the habit of being ourselves, right? So there's a principle in neuroscience that says that nerve cells that fire together wire together. If you keep thinking the same way, uh, if you keep making the same choices, if you keep doing the same things, if you keep reproducing the same experiences and feeling the same emotions, your biology begins to become hardwired in a sense. It, be, uh, it, it becomes programmed. So in order to change uh, something, to arrive at a new vision of your future, if you were, wanted to arrive at a new goal or a new vision of your future, you'd have to change something about yourself in order to get there. And you'd have to change the way you think, the way you act, and the way you feel. When you begin to become conscious of those unconscious thoughts, so conscious that you don't let them slip by your awareness unnoticed or unchecked by you, if you catch yourself speaking in a limited way or um, you're, you become conscious that you're behaving in a certain way, in a habit, and you can notice or pay attention to how you're feeling, then you're no longer the program. How your consciousness observing the program, you're only unconscious when you're in the program and so to change then is to become so conscious that you don't don't go unconscious again and in a sense that is consciousness that is really the puppet master that really decides who we want to be i think the biggest problem uh, is that people lose their free will uh, to a set of programs and so their body is basically um, programmed into a predictable future based on what they've done in the past so to change then, to change that habituation, takes an enormous amount of energy, an enormous amount of awareness. So then, so take it a step further. Then when you think about that life, you produce the same chemistry in your brain and body in the same exact way as if it, you were actually re-experiencing it. So now the thought is turning on the stress response. And it's a scientific fact that the long-term effects of the hormones of stress push the genetic buttons and create disease. Well, if you can turn on that stress response just by thought alone, then your thoughts can make you sick. So, because you're knocking your brain and body out of balance mm -hmm. over and over again and depleting your body's resources that you could be use, using for healing. And it just turns out the stronger the emotion you feel, the more you pay attention to the person or the problem. And that's our vital life force we're giving to that person or that problem. It's so important for us to realize that this is a very uh, intense process. It takes an enormous amount of awareness, an enormous amount of energy to master yourself in that moment because valid, justified or not, the only person that it's hurting is you. And when you finally figure that out, as my <laughs> daughter would say, living by this emotion isn't loving to me. And, and, and yeah. we have to really decide, is this loving to me? So, so it turns out when you teach people how to feel elevated emotions, um, they make some, so many wonderful chemicals that make them feel good. 
that they're no longer dependent on anything outside of them to take away their emptiness, their lack, their separation, their pain, their fear. They're actually learning how to do it without any exogenous substance, without anything outside of them, without any scrolling through. Any, they, this feels way better than any of that. Now, that's the moment where we're all of a sudden free from our environment and, mm -hmm. and, and people self-regulate. And when that happens, their health gets better. They have a headache, it improves. They have pain, it changes. They learn that they can do it by thought alone. How valuable is that? I don't know. Huh. If we could teach our kids that, it would be amazing. And what a suggestibility, your ability to accept it, believe it, to surrender to it as if it's the truth without analyzing it. And that's what actually programs the autonomic nervous system. So we teach people how to regulate their brain states so that they can, they can reprogram. What you want to do now is control and predict everything in your life because you know you're getting ready for the worst thing that could possibly happen. So as you begin to think about every person, every object, every meeting, every place, it's all mapped in your brain and you're shifting your attention to all of these elements, the brain starts to fire out of order because of your attention shifting so quickly because every person, every object, everything has a neurological network in your brain. Keep that up in high beta. The brain starts to compartmentalize. It's a house divided against itself. And when the brain's incoherent, we're incoherent. Mm. When the brain isn't working right, we're not working right. And that, that default state actually is an unhealthy state for the brain to function in. So people become reliant on whatever it is that makes the the discord go away. They, they try to make the feeling go away by gaming or uh, whatever it is, whatever it is they need to do to, to, to settle down that high beta state. I want to free their minds and open their hearts with a simple formula that leads them to a door, right? A door of unlimited possibilities. And I want the door to show people that they are greater than they think, more powerful than they know, more unlimited than, than they could ever dream. And, and I think by providing people the science and taking it to a point where it's understandable and digestible, changes a consciousness, it changes a collective consciousness. Uh, and, and the testimonials are so important because those four minute miles are uh, opportunities for people to, to believe in themselves again, because someone else is doing it, right? So, so a, an emergent consciousness emergence in biology, you know, those flocks of birds and schools of mm -hmm. fish that are moving and behaving in the same way. There's no leader in that process. It's not a top-down phenomenon. Everybody's leading, right? So the coming of a new consciousness is, it, it can't be done uh, with the same consciousness that's created the problems that we have in the world today, you know? And I think when, no matter what you believe, what, I think one thing that everybody is aware of that something doesn't feel right, you know? So, so providing people with the information, the right information that allows them to believe in themselves and to believe in possibility.